All right, so what I'm going to do here is give you guys a very quick crash course in complex analysis. What we mean by complex analysis is working with imaginary numbers. So we use i as the symbol for the square root of negative 1. Now, we know that there is, when we, you cannot have physical objects that are described by i. It is what we call, it, we call it also imaginary numbers or complex numbers. Um, so it is still, it is nevertheless useful to allow numbers which are, which have a complex or imaginary component um, when we are uh, describing physical values. There's a number, so often we can, um, we can use this in order to write notes much more um, complex, compactly. Um, we can, can, we can allow an imaginary component of something and then say, well, but we're just going to take the real part. Um, one of the nice things about working with imaginary numbers is that, uh, that, so you can always, if you have an equation, you can take the real and imaginary parts separately and both sides of the equation, both the real and imaginary parts have to be, the, you can take the real part of the, each side, those have to equal each other, the imaginary parts have to equal each other. So we often were allow things to become imaginary because it makes the math easier and then at the end we just take the real part. Okay, so we can write an imaginary number in general as a plus i b um, and we also use the notation uh, some other constant, I'll call it capital A, times e to the i uh, theta. Um, and here what we're doing is that we are using Euler's equation, e to the i theta um, equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. So if you do that, use that equation, this is a cosine theta um, plus a i sine theta, and then if you are trying to figure out what theta is, we can take the real side, a, little a equals a cosine theta, um, and then b equals a sine theta, and you can get, to take this equation divided by that equation, you get sine theta over cosine theta, which is also tangent of theta, equals b over a. So then, to get that angle, you can, um, you can, if you have an imaginary number in this form, you can use this equation to get the imaginary number in that, in that or the complex number in that form. Okay, so how can we understand this? Well, as is, as is want to happen, we can start using Taylor series. So we are going to uh, allow, we're going to start by using this form, and we are going to look at what the Taylor series of e uh, to the i theta is. So if we have um, e to the x, when, so e to the x, uh, the derivative is always equal to itself. So when we write the Taylor series, the Taylor series is 1 plus x plus 1 over 2 factorial x squared plus 1 over 3 factorial x cubed and so on. And we can write it in summation notation as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n divided by n factorial, where we have used n, uh, where we have used 0 factorial is equal to 1. Okay, then if we evaluate e to the i theta, this is equal to 1 plus i theta, um, and then minus 1 over 2 factorial theta squared, because I have an i squared, and then plus 1 over 3 factorial times i theta cubed, plus, I can keep going, well actually, so then I have 
i to the fourth, which gives me a positive one, theta to the fourth over four factorial, and then I have i to the fifth, which gives me, uh, um, let's see, this one, I actually should have had a minus sign because i squared is negative, or sorry, i cubed is negative i, so here I'm using i, uh, i to the 0 equals 1, i to the 1 equals i, i squared equals negative 1, i cubed equals negative i, i to the 4th equals 1, and then this pattern repeats itself. So this is, uh, so i to the 5th is, um, i to the 5th is i, so I have a plus i over 5 factorial theta to the 5th, and I can keep going. So here, all I'm doing is I'm taking the Taylor series, but I am allowing, um, but I am using a complex uh, number for the argument. And then I can regroup this and call this 1 minus 1 over 2 factorial plus, or sorry, theta squared over 2 factorial plus theta to the fourth over 4 factorial and so on plus, I'm going to pull an i out of all of the imaginary terms, and I get theta um, minus 1 over 3 factorial plus, or sorry, theta cubed over 3 factorial plus theta to the fifth over 5 factorial, and so on. So, if you look up the Taylor series, you will notice that this is cosine of theta, and this is sine of theta. So e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. Um, and then um, we could talk about what this looks like. We uh, talk about imaginary numbers um, in terms of a position on a complex plane. So this is the real component of the number. Um, we often use z as an arbitrary complex number, the same way that we use x as some arbitrary um, real number. So we plot the position of the, we plot the value of the complex number in the uh, complex plane. So if I had the number uh, z equals 2 plus 3i, I would do 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. That would be here in the complex plane. Um, and then um, we, and then this angle theta is the angle, just like if you treated it like a vector, it is the angle between the x-axis and the vector that points from the origin to the position on the plane. So um, here, what we're mostly going to talk about, in most of what we run into in undergraduate physics classes is you can all... Um, you can always go back to Euler's equation um, and use this to figure out how you can um, simplify things. If you guys have a chance to, um, if you're a math minor, I might suggest trying to take a complex analysis class. Um, there's what, What's tricky about complex numbers is that your brain is not so comfortable with treating i like a regular number, but it isn't actually that complicated. So if, so if you're talking about functions of complex numbers, the way that we actually evaluate them and figure out how to treat the function of a complex number is to take the Taylor series and see what the Taylor series does and how it behaves. By the way, a little more esoteric, but you can actually do the same thing with matrices. So if you start talking about 
functions of matrices, you define what that means in terms of the Taylor series of that matrix as well. Um, so what you're mostly going to be doing in intro physics is just things that you can deal with with Euler's equation, um, or you can always you can break it down into the original components. I'm going to do a few examples. Um, it's, you can also think of it, you, you guys are physics majors, so you're somewhat comfortable with vectors at this point. You can treat it more or less like a vector. So if I have z equals 3i, let me call it z1 equals 3i plus 2. Actually, I wrote this switched from the way we normally do. z2 is 45 minus 2 i um, and z3 is equal to 10 plus 2i. So now I can do a number of functions. Let me do z1 plus z2. This is equal to the sum of the real components, so 47, plus the sum of the imaginary components, so plus i z1 plus z3 is equal to sum of the real components, 12, plus sum of the imaginary components, plus 5i. OK, let's do subtraction. It's just how you would expect. z1 minus z3 is? 2 minus 10, so negative 8, plus 3i minus 2i, um, so plus i. Now, let's talk about the magnitude, the same way that when we have vectors, we talk about a magnitude. So for the magnitude of the complex number, we, um, we want the length, so you already kind of know what I'm going to do. It's going to be 3 squared plus, the magnitude of z1 is 3 squared plus 4 squared. So in this case, that is thir the, the square root of that. So this, in this case, it's the square root of 13. Um, now, how do you actually do that? We define something that we call the complex conjugate, and that is denoted with a star. So z star is equal to 3i, or negative 3i plus 2. And then z1 times z1 star is equal to 3i plus 2 times negative 3i plus 2. I can work this out, and I get, I'm going to just, this is exactly, multiplication is exactly how you might expect. You just multiply everything in the parentheses by each other. So here I have three, negative, three, negative 9i squared. And that's this times this plus this times that. So plus, uh, plus 6i plus this times that is negative 6i plus this times that plus 4. OK, negative, I, negative 9i squared is a positive 9. So first of all, these two cancel out, and then I get 9 plus 4. So I'm always going to get, when I do this, I am always going to get this z, z star is always the sum of the real squares component squared plus the sum of the imaginary, uh, plus the imaginary component squared. I can do z1 times z2, and that is going to be, so 2 plus 3i times 45 minus 2i. Here I flip back to the standard way of writing it just because it helps me avoid making dumb mistakes. So here, I'm no longer going to get this cancellation. I am, in fact, going to have an imaginary component. So this is 90 um, 
and then minus 4i plus 135i, uh, and then 3, so 3i times negative 2i is a positive 6. So this gives me 96 plus 131i. Okay, so here, if we, this is all using this notation, um, I am going to have, I'm going to write a few more z's. Um, so let's do z4 equals 5e to the negative pi i. Z5 is 2e to the negative i. Now, um, when I do, if I want to do z4 plus z5, this is actually kind of hard. I have to use Euler's equation, so I get cosine of negative pi um, 5 cosine of negative pi plus i5 sine of negative pi. I could simplify this. I'm not going to because I really just want to show you the basics really quick. So that's this number plus 2 cosine of negative 1 plus 2i sine of negative 1 and then I would have to add the components. So my real components would be this mess. Where it takes me longer to write it. All right, so that is how I would do addition when I'm using this notation. And here, z, well, let's take z4 times z4 star. The way you take a complex conjugate of this notation is to just change the sign of the exponent. So I have 5e to the negative pi i times 5e to the pi i, and this is just 25. So, um, when I use the exponential notation, this is already the, the magnitude of the number. And if I want to multiply two numbers, let's take z4 times z5. This is going to be 5e to the negative pi i times 2e to the negative i. And this, the, these numbers multiply, I get 10 e to the negative pi plus 1 times i. So multiplication is a lot easier when using this notation. Addition and subtraction is a lot easier when using that notation. There is nothing magic about this, no matter how you do it. Um, the, your, so just like I was saying in some of the other videos, break it down into pieces. So treat i as just like any number, except that it has this wonderful quality that i squared is negative 1, which lets you do a little bit more simplification. If you're calculating a function of a complex number, you just take a Taylor series. If you are doing addition and subtraction, um, you can treat i as sort of like a special variable that when you square it happens to go to negative 1. Um, and otherwise, addition and subtraction works exactly how you might expect. So. Don't be intimidated by complex numbers. They are your friends. They are going to make a lot of the math that you do a lot easier. And remember, a good physicist is a lazy physicist, which means that you should be using them.